guys, so this is the last part of my January book haul which I split into three because I had quite a lot of books to talk about and in case you haven't seen the previous two I will link them down in the description box. But this book haul is even more specific than both of them as all of the pamphlets and books in this haul were sent to me by my lovely friend Jen who I know that uh, my friends and I jokingly call a book bully but she has incredible taste and is incredibly generous so I was very very happy to see these books appear in my post. Jen had a massive clear out of all of her poetry which she has shelves and shelves and shelves of. She is a poet herself and um, has read quite a large girth of poetry. She asked if I'd like any and although I didn't recognise a lot of the poetry books or the ones I did were ones I'd already read uh, I said if there was any she thought I might be interested in just to send them over and I was not expecting what she sent me. She sent me all of this and like a lot of these are thin pamphlet books so there's quite a lot here. There's also some poetry magazine issues. I think it was very kind of her because this way I myself can kind of discover some new poets, find some new poetry styles I like because although I've always enjoyed poetry I'm certainly no expert and I'm reading nowhere near as much poetry as I like to as well as kind of sticking to the same old poets that I know until somebody tells me otherwise so I think this will be good. These books aren't necessarily Jen's favourite poetry books as I said she was getting rid of them uh, but that does not mean that I won't like them and it doesn't mean that Jen doesn't like some of them so I will show them to you now. The first one is Ted Hughes Poems Selected by Simon Armitage. This is another little collection of Ted Hughes poetry and if you saw my other book hauls then I also hold a collection of Ted Hughes poetry in one of those so I'm definitely sorted for Ted Hughes poetry at the moment but I have enjoyed Ted Hughes poetry in the past so I am looking forward to reading more of his poetry. We then have For the Messengers by Jude Cohen and this is kind of political historical commentary on contemporary issues poetry which Jen knows I enjoy, she knows I enjoy political poetry so she said she chucked a few political ones in there and this is one of them. I obviously haven't read it yet but I'm looking forward to. We then have Love Poems by Carol Ann Duffy. Now Carol Ann Duffy is a poet that I'm familiar with and I've read quite a lot of. She's a poet I studied in school and have subsequently read more poetry of and really enjoyed. I do not however own this collection which is an absolutely gorgeous gorgeous copy so I'm very much looking forward to reading this. And this book is another quite Emotional one, this is Black Roses, The Killing of Sophie Lancaster by Simon Armitage and these are poems dedicated to the memory of Sophie Lancaster who was assaulted and subsequently died because of that assault. So another one that I think is going to be incredibly moving and generally speaks out against hate crimes. We then have issue number 80 of the Rialto poetry kind of magazine journal. The Rialto are a pamphlet publishers of poetry and they have in fact published Jen in the past and it's where I bought my copy of the Hungry Ghost Festival from so I'll link that down below as well but yeah this just has a compilation of various different poets inside it including Jen herself so I'm very excited to read this one and perhaps discover some new favourite poets. We then have The Shipwrecked House by Claire Trivian uh, published by Penned in the margins and from the back this one seems to be kind of magic, realism, fantastical poetry inspired by kind of like myths and legends with those kind of themes running through it. So another one I'm looking forward to checking out. We then have There Are No Americans in Baghdad's Bird Market by Dikra Rida. Another one with political themes and um, deals with sexism and culture and, and the poet's own exile from Iraq and her distance from her family. So that's that one. We then have Caddy Ben Benyon's Milk Fever, which is a debut collection published by Salt, and this deals with themes of family, love, loss, motherhood, and will apparently bring a lump to my throat, the description says. I really like the cover of this one for some reason, I also quite like the, the shape. Um, this is The Earth in the Attic by Fadi Judah. We know I'm not great with pronouncing names, it doesn't help with the accent. This poet was the winner of Yale's Young Poet Award, and it says that she explores big themes like identity, war, religion, um, what we hold in common, so that sounds good. I then have <laughs> Shearsman issues 91 and 92 bound up here, another poetry journal, and guess who else is in this one? Jen, <laughs> as well as a selection of other poets, another one that will be good to dip my toes into and I do love Jen's poetry, so I'm very happy to have this. We then have issue Five of Ink Spell, magazine for creative types. Another one featuring the lovely work of Jen Campbell. You write too many awesome things, Jen. 
I mean, I think that's a conclusion we have to come to at this point. And this collects together short stories, poetry, art and photography. We then have How to Fall by Karen Anessen, another one published by Salt Publishing. And, th and this deals with relationships, past and present, the loss of love, that kind of stuff that I'm sure has affected a lot of us. And last but certainly not least, we have The Mermaid and the Sailors by Claire Askew. I really like the cover of this little pamphlet. This is published by Red Squirrel Press. No, I'm I'm just anticipating the comments about the way I pronounce squirrel. It's not that it's not that special when you live in Scotland. This is about landscapes and home and family and grandparents and yes, another one that will be fun to check out. But that is all for this haul. In fact, that is all for January's hauls. I hope you enjoyed them and I haven't made your TBR list or wish lists too long. I have over 180 books on my Amazon wish list right now and sometimes I just think like when am I ever going to buy all of these? Especially when more keep getting added. One day. <laughs> One day. Until then though, I'm sure I'll manage. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.